Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 905. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how inflation is at a 13-year high because this is something really important that's happening right under our noses, and we haven't seen it for a very long time. And that is that inflation and prices are starting to soar. We've been living in a low inflation environment for so many years. It's been rather deflationary with new technology creating deflation and also interest rates being so low. We really haven't had inflation to worry about for a very long time. So the fact that prices are soaring, I think it's worth talking about. I know I've done some other podcasts recently about inflation, but I think it's something that we need to keep revisiting so that people really get a firm grip on what is happening because it is a different investing scenario for you to consider. When you're losing purchasing power on your money, you have to think about what kinds of investments maintain purchasing power. It's not just enough to be invested in stocks or real estate, although those things do well in inflationary times in general, but you also wanna be thinking about some positive things that can actually do better than inflation or do better than seeing your currency lose value, keep your purchasing power intact and not lose 15%, 20% a year in purchasing power, which is really where things all said and done are gonna total up to some enormous amount like that. When you have all the money creation that we've had, it's bound to weaken your currency. And that's something, again, I think most Americans aren't used to seeing. Some countries are used to it, like Argentina has been through this. They know what this is like. They know what's coming down the pike. But a lot of Americans have never seen this before. This is unusual to us. And it's something that we really need to get a grip on and have a strategy for. So first I wanna share this article with you from CNN Business. It says, prices keep soaring, inflation rockets to a 13 year high. Prices keep rising in the United States, putting a squeeze on American consumers' wallets. That trend got worse in June. The Consumer Price Index, the nation's key inflation measure, jumped 0.9% in June, the largest one-month increase in 13 years. Over the last 12 months, prices were up 5.4%, the biggest jump in annual inflation in nearly 13 years. Much of the rise in prices is due to gasoline prices, which are far above last summer's levels. The pandemic caused a sharp drop in driving in the price of oil, but travel is back and so is demand for gas and oil. Gas prices rose 45.1% compared to a year earlier. Food prices are up 2.4% in the past 12 months, but prices for dining out rose 4.2%. Restaurants are having trouble attracting help as they try to reopen, which has led to higher wages. That increased cost is getting passed on to customers. So I wanna pause there and say, when you have gasoline and food and wages going up, it tends to create an increasing spiral because one thing gets more expensive, so people have to raise their prices, so another thing gets more expensive and they have to raise their prices again, and it just becomes this self-perpetuating situation that prices keep rising. Now, in addition to this, we have heard that container ships have had to increase the price of their containers from $3,000 per container to $20,000 per container. So that's another cost that would get factored into other costs and passed on to the consumer. So these are things that we start to see across every single category that we're spending on because typically anything that is, whether it's clothing or food or anything that's shipped or imported, 
anything that requires it to be trucked or requires any kind of travel that has the energy impact, anything that requires a worker or any kind of wages that has that impact. So these things all added together mean that we're going to see much higher prices ahead. The article goes on to say, but volatile food and fuel prices aren't the only drivers of higher costs. Stripping out those categories, so-called core consumer price index rose 0.9% in June and 4.5% over the last 12 months. That represented the biggest 12-month increase in that closely watched measure in 30 years. Record prices for used cars accounted for more than a third of the overall rise in prices. Used car prices were up 10.5% in June, the largest one-month jump in records that go back nearly 70 years and a stunning 45.2% over the last 12 months. So I want to pause there. Used car prices up 45% in the last 12 months. We're used to some crazy things happening, but that is one crazy statistic right there. The article goes on to say new car prices are also up 5.3% over the last year, hitting record levels. Car prices are being driven up by strong consumer demand for cars, along with a limited supply due to a shortage of computer chips needed to build the cars. Rental car companies, a key seller of used cars, already sold off much of their fleet of cars last year to raise cash during the pandemic and now don't have enough cars to rent. I want to pause there and say I heard a story about the fact that there were so few rental cars to rent that people were actually going to, I think, Lowe's or Home Depot where they rent trucks and they were renting their vehicles at a better daily rate than the rental car place was renting cars because the rental car place had no cars and the Lowe's or Home Depot, I can't remember which one it was, but their daily rates were less than the rental car place. So people are getting creative. If you need a car, maybe you need to check into that strategy and see if that works for you while you are looking to rent. The article goes on to say, although prolonged inflation can be a cause for concern, there's reason to believe that this recent rise in prices, although pronounced, will be temporary. Inflation is soaring in part because prices are returning to normal levels after the economy fell into a recession. That makes year-over-year comparisons seem electric, showing up as big increases. I want to pause there and say, well, that's very true. When you compare over a 12-month period, it can seem like a big spike. But these increases are real, and we're seeing these shortages are real. So I don't agree with the temporary situation. In my work that I'm doing, I'm seeing that inflation is going to be here with us for several years to come, and we need to be planning for it. We need to be investing for it. We need to be making sure our purchasing power remains intact. The article goes on to say that is particularly true for the price of travel. For example, Airfares are up 24.6% over the last 12 months, while hotel and motel prices rose 15.1%. But both are still below where they stood in June of 2019, ahead of the pandemic. Economists, including those of the Federal Reserve, have signaled they believe this burst of inflation will pass. But if prices continue to exceed expectations, it could prompt the central bank to raise interest rates in an attempt to cool off the economy. The Fed, however, recently signaled it expects to keep rates this low into 2023. Some experts agree with the Fed's take that inflation pressures will start easing in the second half of this year. The headline inflation numbers have been eye-popping in recent months, but underlying inflation remains under control, says Gus Foucher, chief economist at PNC Financial. He noticed Prices in a few areas like used and rental cars, airfares, and hotels are skyrocketing, and that once again, comparisons with weak prices a year earlier are overstating inflation. Both factors will wash out of the data in the near term. But not all economists are convinced the pandemic-fueled effect on inflation will be short-lived. Sun Hua Sun, economics professor at Marymount University, said, the inflation picture looks less and less transitory, adding that the supply bottlenecks, a surge in demand, and the base effect explain some of the increases, but it is difficult to argue that everything will be back to normal in a few months. For example, he pointed to labor shortages that he believes are likely to lead to increased wages. 
No doubt these labor costs that are high will be reflected in higher prices in the future, he said. Beyond economists, average Americans are becoming more concerned about prices too. A survey of consumers by the Federal Reserve found that consumers expect about this level of inflation, a 4.8% annual increase, to last for at least the next year. That's the highest level since the Fed started the survey in 2013. End of article. All right, well, we have talked about how John Williams from shadowstats.com keeps a record of the way that inflation used to be calculated. And based on that, he said the real inflation numbers are a 7% increase over what they're reporting to us. So we know that inflation is a lot higher than what they're telling us. That means that we have to have some investment strategies intact to keep our purchasing power being able to afford this rising increase in inflation. And that means we need to be in items that increase as the dollar decreases. Things like cryptocurrencies, things like mining stocks, metals, real estate, and the stock market are all things that should help to outpace some of these inflating prices. What you don't want is too much of your money in bonds, in fixed income instruments, in savings accounts, cash of any sort. These are things that are going to depreciate in value. So you wanna look at your asset allocation, make sure that you're in the right percentages and you don't have too much in these kinds of fixed assets. Oh, also CDs, certificates of deposit, would be also a troublesome investment in a high inflationary time. So take a look at your asset allocation. Make sure you're in the right numbers and don't have too much in things that can really lose purchasing power. I will put a link to this article in the show notes so you can check it out. And just remember that I have more podcasts than are available on Apple Podcasts over at my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.